Yeah, it looks a lot different from this vantage point than the sad faces we had uh, back. It's, uh, some, it's been some few, changes. A few Decembers ago. There's yeah. been some changes. Yeah. It's changed well, a long bit. December. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome to On uh, the Bench. I'm your host for this episode, Brendan Sinone, joined by a friend of the podcast. You've heard him multiple times, but he, he's Glown up a little bit. He's changed in the world. He keeps moving up the ladder of FSU football. Uh, and it is Ingram Smith. He is the face of the battle's end. Uh, and he's here to make an excited announcement as well as just kind of shoot the shit with us a little bit. So, Ingram, welcome to On the Bench yet again. Hopefully, it's more fun than the last time you were on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have been fortunate to join On the Bench in the past, and uh, some have been enjoyable moments, and some of them have been a uh, four hour and 15 minute funeral. So, uh, no, I'm excited to <laughs> excited to join you today. I appreciate you letting me have a platform to discuss what we're doing with the battles in and, and what we're about to do and, and, uh, availability for outside, uh, involvement. And yeah, man, I, you know, Brendan, you, you and I've been fortunate to know each other for a while and I've been, uh, fortunate to be a past guest. So, uh, let's just open it up and see where the conversation goes. All right, let's do it. Let, let's start with that four hour and 15 minute funeral, because I think there's going to be some poetic book endingness to this, the story as we get into what you're doing now. And the last time I, I believe you joined us on, on OTB, and you'd been on previously too, but it was National Signing Day uh, two years ago. And you were supposed to join for what, like about 30 minutes to an hour. And all of a sudden, uh, stuff started hitting the fan. It all started happening. Absolutely. Yeah. One fateful signing day. And, and for me personally, I had just gotten diagnosed with COVID the day before I was, I That's didn't right. feel like I had anything more than a cold, but I wasn't going anywhere. So, uh, when 30 minutes turned into four hours, I just was, I was sitting here just as I would have been otherwise. So yeah, man, I mean, certainly, um, I had some friends in college that were in a fraternity that they claimed they had a spiritual founder and I made fun of them for that all the time. Uh, I won't tell you, that we were founded or that we were directly tied to that day. But <laughs> early signing day a couple of years ago is probably the battles in spiritual founder. I mean, that is mm -hmm. when kind of some of these pieces uh, started to move and, and started to look at um, what was possible and what was out there and, and examine um, why an institution that had more support than, than people perhaps thought uh, had, had kind of stumbled into a place where you could, uh, Travis Hunter was disappointing, but you know, for me, and we don't need to go relive all the events of the day, the, the other recruitments that day. And, and certainly if you want to group in uh, Wesley Besaint of, of 48 hours earlier was, was more disappointing and more concerning, really, you know, you can have a, uh, was it a white swan event or whatever it's called? I mean, you can have an event that happens one in 10,000 times or something like that. And to an extent that was Travis Hunter deciding to sign with a HBCU and, and, in all likelihood, kind of resetting the the market on what NIL could do and certainly what NIL could do with a, a large entertainment company backing. Um, but mm -hmm. it was it was the other losses that day that were more concerning. And, and you know, again, not to get granular on everything, but, I, I you know, you didn't finish second with Marvin Jones Jr. either. I mean, it was just it was indicative that um, there needed to be some a serious look in the mirror and, and figure out how this institution could um, or not this institution, we don't have institutional backing or anything else, but how people that care about Florida state, that's what I'm saying. I mean, no, mm -hmm. you know, nobody talked to the president or anything. That's not what I'm trying to suggest, but how people who deeply care about Florida state uh, could put, you know, put themselves together and uh, form an entity that could have a better reflection on that of what they care about so deeply. Could get involved. I think that is one of the cool parts of, of NIL is people who are maybe, concerned or, or hesitant to get involved beforehand and, and now it, this kind of empowers a fan base to to move forward in a way uh if done responsibly which the battle's end is doing um and not every collective is like that i won't let ingram say that i will say that not every does it the right way but if, if it's being done in the right way it's an empowerment for a fan base empowerment for players it, it helps out a lot of different parties um and i want to get to what your announcement is going to be in a second here but i think this kind of brings us full circle like that that day uh, I mean, Bud, Bud's Nolcast quote about, you know, it's getting late early was was poignant. And I remember just reflecting on it that evening, Ingram, of just that whole day and feeling like, wow, FSU has has become relegated. Like there is a tier system, a class system. There always has been in college football, but it's speeding along. It was speeding along so quickly and still is to where it felt like like FSU got demoted from triple A to double A. 
Uh, and now fast forward a year and a half later and good things are happening, man. And yes, on the field, that's been great, but what all the players returning and the ability to support them through battles. And I, I think we've seen how getting organized uh, between the vision of what Mike Norvell has had on the field and then uh, what's happening with this empowerment of uh, the, your collective specifically uh, off of it is, is helping FSU get back to where it belongs. You're taking gradual steps. Uh, I, I hope I'm not misspeaking with that, but I, I think that's how I feel. I, I assume you take some pride in what you've seen develop in the last few months as well. Yeah, certainly. I, t- I take a lot of pride and I, I know that, uh, you know, my broad, well, it's not even my, I'll say our, our broader team uh, takes a lot of pride in it. You know, we are six or seven people that I think I'm the only person in it that didn't go to Florida state. And if anybody wants to concern themselves with my emotional ties or concerns <laughs> uh, with Florida state university, I'm happy to have that conversation, but it's people that love Florida state and it's people that want to do things uh, because of emotional um, and ties and, and passion that they have for this university. Um, I also think that there is a feeling uh, that there's, and I hate to use buzzwords and other crap like that, but there's a, there's a, a ton of alignment in key places of leadership right now. Um, Florida State, you know, for a period of time might not have had great leadership in certain uh, aspects, but I, I know that there's a ton of institutional uh, support behind Michael Alford and, and what he's doing. Uh, the Seminole Boosters have uh, really solid leadership and, and kind of the direction that they've taken uh, that entity over the last two or three years has been very impressive. Obviously, Alfred has his, his fingerprints on that as well. And um, there's just a there's a belief in uh, or, or a um, there's a buy in and a belief uh, among you know key constituencies that all the ingredients are here right now. You've got a coach that people can buy into. Uh, you've got Seminole Boosters doing great things with what they've done with the Bowden Society and uh, some of the opportunities that they're providing. Uh, student athletes and, and coaches and the ability to retain and extend coaches. Um, and then obviously I think Florida state feels as comfortable about who sits in the chair at athletic director as they have in probably 10 or 15 years. So uh, we thought there was great opportunity. Uh, we could step into this space, uh, be a solid representation of uh, Florida state in the, uh, in the NIL world. And uh, we're really excited about what the first three months have looked like and, and the impact that we've been able to have as a team. It's amazing. Uh, just a few months of, of what's happened, how quickly it's all transpired and, and the legitimacy that has occurred with the battles. And that's not me. If I didn't feel that way. I, I wouldn't say it. like it, it's yeah. been it's been swift. And I think you guys have handled it the right way in terms of a public relation aspect of it. And you said, man, I remember saying that when, when you told me that this was going to happen. So just like, we just want people to watch us work. Like that's all we ask is just watch what we do. We're not going to ask for anything. We want to, to prove that we are legitimate and fast forward three months, there's legitimacy. And now there's the opportunity. We'll get into the announcement here, man. There's the opportunity for the group of the, the six or seven of you guys who are spearheading the battles and to open it up to fan involvement and participation, which, which I always assume was be the, the logical next step. Uh, but, but there's, I think, reasonable um there's reasonable cause to do so and to do so optimistically yeah um you know that so i would just say real quickly you know there's kind of if you want to use the the um what is it the glacier analogy or whatever there's like the there's like the three months above water and probably four or five months underwater right. and for some people even more um so there's there's been a whole lot of uh, work that's gone into this and that was done before we ever kind of announced ourselves but certainly you know, that of, of what uh, the public and, and broader college athletic world can see uh, for us started in late November, first of December, somewhere in that area. Um, we were fortunate in the fact that uh, this is kind of a, a core loose grouping of friends and uh, we have um, a significant amount of capital behind us. So we didn't have to open up by asking uh, for donations or support or anything else. We knew what we could do uh, with the resources that we had at hand. And we knew that we could execute a plan, a plan, like I said, that we had kind of been building for four or five months and, and then decided to roll out pretty aggressively. Uh, but what Brennan was alluding to and, and what we've kind of mentioned on various forms of social media is that we are going to have public involvement. Now, originally, uh, that date was kind of scheduled for middle of this week. 
Uh, I had the audacity to go get married uh, uh, two Saturdays ago and then go on a honeymoon. How so, dare you? How dare I? I? Yes. Uh, so that may slide to maybe Monday of next week. But within the next calendar seven days, we will have uh, opportunity for public involvement. And we're really excited about it, man. I mean, this is uh, this is not trying to get too like crunchy or granola with you or anything else, but this is a, we want this to be a reflection of the fan base. We want everybody involved. One of the, and I don't blame anybody, perhaps it's my fault for not more clearly defining what we were in the first 72 hours a week. You know, this was never going to be a secret society or a country club. This was never going to be, Oh, don't talk to us. If, if you can't give us a hundred thousand dollars or something like that, we want everybody. If you can give us $5, get involved. We, we want involvement. Uh, um, no, I'm not, I almost said we want involvement more than money. That that would be a little bit more hyperbole <laughs> on the other way. We but we we value involvement exceptionally high. And mm -hmm. uh, I think I said on a null cast when we first started doing this, man, if, if we could get five dollars from everybody that went to a game, yeah. uh, that would mean more to uh, the people that are behind this from a financial perspective than, you know, some in one one off individual giving us a, you know, one point five million dollars or something like that. So we you know, we want to we take this very seriously. We want to be a solid representation of this fan base. Uh, we we will we will make mistakes. Uh, I will make mistakes, uh, but I don't think we'll ever embarrass you. We this is never going to be a vanity project for myself or anybody else involved. We're not trying to sell you anything. You're never going to see a picture with us in our new boat or our yacht or our house or anything else. You know, we want this to be about providing opportunities for the kids. It's not about ego. Uh, it's not about us. Uh, we want to do everything that we can uh, to serve um, the sports that we're working with at, at uh, Florida State. And, and in time, uh, that umbrella will grow as well. Uh, but we want to be the best reflection of this fan base. And it's a fan base that I know you know, intimately well from, from growing up in the, uh, in the internet era and, and being on message boards and everything else. Uh, this is a passion play for us. And we're really excited uh, as to what we can do with that passion, what we've done with that passion. And uh, we know that we're only going to be more successful when the, uh, the winds are further in our sails from, from broader public involvement. People are going to want to know. So you mentioned the goal now is early next week to open it up for for fans to get involved. I guess how are they going to be able to do so? Uh, what's the platform going to be like? And sure. Uh, and then one other question I know that we're going to get is if people always want to know, like, can I give it to a specific player? Is there a route to to do it to a specific sport? So I guess those are some of the initial entry level questions for you. Absolutely. Yes. You can be as detailed and granular in your ask as possible. Now we may have to make it a somewhat of a, of a threshold and I'm not talking about a thousand dollars. We may have to make it $25 or more or something only because we can't incur a loss to make sure that $5 and 96 cents goes to the backup catcher on the baseball team or something right. like that. Uh, so there may be a small minimum on if you want to laser target uh, your donation, but we will, uh, I have full confidence that we'll be able to make good on almost any want that you ask as long as it is as long as it is as long as it is within you know the laws and bylaws of this rapidly changing landscape. So uh, yeah, absolutely. We will have a, a website available uh, for you here shortly. We partnered with um, with a company that actually has done a lot of like NASCAR's fan engagement and and other things like that. So we didn't just, you know, go on Fiverr and, and grab somebody. This is something that dates back to November, middle of November for us uh, as to somebody that we knew we wanted to partner with. And uh, man, if you want a good website, you can't just snap your fingers. I know, uh, I know it seems like that, uh, but we want to be deliberate with what we do. And again, we were fortunate enough to be in a situation where we knew we didn't have to rush for capital. We didn't have to get a, a landing page open immediately or something like that. Uh, we wanted to take our time with this, do it right. And uh, when we think, that we turn the keys on this thing and press go. I think it's going to be a um, solid reflection of, of the group that we are and, and uh, certainly the, you know, the group that we strive to be with, uh, with more involvement. So let's take a step back and discuss your journey to this point. Uh, you have not been shy in saying that this is a, a dream job for you. And it seems just so incredibly cool that someone just, just cool as an outsider to see like someone who grew up a Florida state fan and, loves this program and has covered it as closely as anyone uh, for a while now has 
gotten into this opportunity to legitimately like put your fingerprints on it and make a an, a profound impact. Like that, that's cool to see. I love to see someone living out their dreams, Ingram. How how did this? Well, let's go way back. How did you become a Florida State fan, and how did that I guess grow into then becoming uh, one of the preeminent, if not the preeminent, voice of of the Seminoles? Sure. So my, um, you know, not to get my mom and dad separated fairly young. I grew up with my mom as a single mother. Uh, my mom is a massive sports fan and a graduate of Florida State University, as is her sister and her cousin and her aunt. My mom's family's real Florida State. Uh, my dad went to Williams College in Massachusetts, and I love my dad. My dad's a massive sports fan, uh, but you don't see too many Williams games on uh, on TV when you're growing up. Uh, and I, you know, I connected uh, with Florida State, and it was a great uh, source of of shared joy from my mom and myself. And it was uh, one time a week uh, that she was afforded the luxury of not having to, you know, hover over some hyperactive psychopath that I was as a child, and I would you know, sit uh, intently and, and watch the game. And it's just always been a passion for me. I reference that I I got uh, married last Saturday and uh, we had the rehearsal dinner at my cousin's house. And I told the story of in 1997 when Travis Minor, who was the number one running back in the country, extended his recruitment a couple of days because his dad was an oil rig worker and um, that was a big deal. And I, uh, my, we didn't have the internet, but my cousins did. So I walked 1.4 miles a couple times a week to go get on the internet and check on what was going on with Travis Hunter and whether or not he was going to sign with Florida state. And that Tra- is uh, Tra- Travis, Travis minor, not Travis, Travis minor. The, the, Sorry, the ghost, Travis the ghost, minor. Is, the ghost yes. is still, he's, still, he's still, us, even still, as still we lingers over my, <laughs> my shoulder here. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd walk 1.3 or 1.4, whatever it was miles to go, to go on this fancy internet thing and, and check and see whether or not the uh, running back at a Baton Rouge Catholic had actually signed with Florida state. So I'm uh, you know, that's, that's who I am. And I, I was fortunate in a situation where my cousin was real good friends with a, um, a guy out of Atlanta by the name of George Lombard in high school. And she took me to one of his high school games. And I thought I was going to see, you know, my cousin's friend who was a backup tight end at love it. And he ended up being the number one running back in the country that year. And I was, I saw what recruiting meant real quickly. And there was a quarterback at New Orleans by the name of Peyton Manning and an offensive tackle by the name of Orlando Pace in that class. And trust me, it didn't take me long to realize that, hey, this recruiting stuff matters. And uh, I was hooked. I was hooked as a nine or 10 year old. And so this has always been, you know, something that I've had a, a keen interest in. And um, it's a it's a dream come true, man. It's a um, it is a lot of work. Uh, there's days where uh, I have a lot of responsibilities. There's days where I don't have a ton, uh, but I, I don't feel like I've worked a day yet. Um, it is a, it is, you know, there's when you, when you're doing something you love and I hate to sound cliche, just you get up and you do it. And if it means you stay up till three in the morning and wake up at six, uh, which is what myself and, and all of our team did for a period while we were launching, uh, we did it because it's just the ultimate dream for all of us to be involved in something like this. So, yeah. It- and you've talked before about uh, the journey of, of the NOCAST and founding it. And that further opened, I would imagine, opened up doors for you to to expand your network of sources and get more and more information about Florida State in the last decade or so. But, sure. then make, so, but to make the jump from, we know Ingram's plugged in. Like, that's not a secret. What has it been like now jumping to <laughs> another level of like it? How is the sausage made? Like, has that changed? Like, you're getting to see this now? Like, have you gone from someone who you thought was super informed to being like, oh, I may not really have known all that much after all? Yeah, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of humility that y- you have to take when you actually realize, you know, fully. I, and look, I don't fully know what's going on. I don't know all the right. decisions, but I sure as hell know a lot more than I did six months ago. And I thought I was one of the more informed people out there six months ago. Uh, so, you know, you do you do learn real quickly and particularly on this subject. in NIL, man, there's there's uh, there's a lot of great people out there doing some work and I'm not blowing smoke, Brendan. I really enjoyed what you've done with 247 and, yeah. and uh, the role that you've taken uh, kind of nationally with that. But um it, man, nobody knows anything about NIL until you get behind the curtain, really. I mean, there's, you know, there's some formulas out there and I'm not taking shots at anybody. Uh, but what I think happens in some situations is that like, you know, maybe you actually know what's going on. And I'm just, I'm, this is hypothetical. Maybe you know what's going on at Tennessee, right? So maybe you know what Tennessee has valued a couple of players. And so your extrapolation is, is 
oh, well, if Tennessee's doing that, then that's probably what Alabama or Georgia do. And all of a sudden, this is our reflection in the market. No, 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 no. I mean, it, it is crazy. Uh, uh, perspective varies from institution to institution. Uh, obviously, we um, kind of made our bones, if you want to use such a term, um, in the in the retention world. And that's mm -hmm. where we identified, we thought a, a market, um, you know, we thought there was a, a little bit of a, a misvaluation of the market as to like, Hey, why are you going and paying high school kids? Yes. A silly amounts of money that you could otherwise probably retain six to eight meaningful pieces of your oh, roster. With. Even like that, that's asinine. Even like, like you don't have to comment on this, but like if Jared verse were to have hit the open market this year, as opposed to last cycle, like, oh. I mean, it, it yeah. an, an astronomical amount of money, uh, that he would have gotten for NIL opportunities. It, yeah, so yes, I sorry. Continue. I think that was a, a, a really good point, though, that, that you guys have found a great little market uh, inefficiency. No, I mean your your open market point about Jared versus is absolutely correct. And um, yeah, we don't need to get into details of things, but there's a reason why Jordan Travis was our number one target. We we didn't um, look. You know, would Jordan Travis have left Florida State? Probably not. Did we want Jordan Travis to even? see what the open market was going to look like. Hell no. Hell no. I mean, that was, you know, we, we knew, we knew what we wanted to do. And uh, that was a, an aggressive one for us. And it might not have been our first announcement, uh, but it was our first negotiation. And it was, that, that was it, the domino to fall, right? The most it, important it one. led to everything else. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, like I said, we'll make mistakes. We're not perfect, but uh, we've got a team that takes us really seriously and is, is, bright and um it's a it's a great fitting of a lot of kind of loose friendships over 20 years and uh you know one of us um is a is a managing partner at a accounting firm one of us is an insurance expert uh, one of us uh we've got a guy on our team named Artie miss that's just knows the landscape of florida better than than probably anybody else as far as relationships and and we're we're really fortunate so uh we've got legal and um you know, we're going to work more to build this team out. That's that's what I can tell you that I know we need to do. Uh, the the thing that we've gotten some recent pub uh, for the Super Bowl trip is going to allow us to have resources to build our team out more. Um, this will probably be in a week or so, but we're going to have an announcement about a, a partnership that we have with a mar marketing firm that is, I think, is unlike anything any other. Um, I'm going to try to get away from the term collective personally. Any any, any other group in the NIL space is done. Um, we're, we're really excited and we think that, um, yes, we just kind of officially started. We've been around for a while, but I think we've learned a lot about what to do and, and more importantly, what not to do. And, uh, I think we're going to be leaders in this space. It's something I've said since day one. And I think that we have proven it true and we're going to continue to prove it true. But why aren't you a huge fan of the the phrase collective? Just curious on the the psychology behind that or what the uh, philosophy. I, I, I think it's become so kind of widely oh. encompassing that people are just starting to use the term and not really. Uh, it, it's just become synonymous with the space. Gotcha. And uh, we view ourselves more as a startup than a collective. So um, yeah, that's <laughs> that's my, that's well, my answer. <laughs> now, now collective uh, is becoming kind of like a. Uh, there's some negative. Uh, it's been painted, painted with it. a negative connotation, certainly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's what happens when you go and do something silly. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I got a couple more questions for you. We'll let you run. Uh, you mentioned just this this sobering, like, oh, I, I may not have known as much as I thought I did, uh, kind of reality. What, what I guess that you've gotten the peak behind the curtain, like what's been the most jarring part of this process? Or is that it? Just to kind of this like stargaze and like, oh, this, this is a much bigger world than – than I had ever anticipated? Or has there been something else that's kind of slapped you across the face since you've gotten involved these last six months in a, in a deeper level than you could have ever expected? Yeah, I mean, it's some things I knew, uh, like message, God, I have a whole new appreciation for message boards now. I don't have time to read them or whatever else, but occasionally I'll get a screenshot or something like that of somebody who's like, I know what's going on, blah, blah, blah. And it's a hundred percent inaccurate. So I, I just love that. Um, don't say that. Don't say yeah. that. No, every, every, all the stuff that <laughs> yeah, posted on, on Cochrane is hundred uh, yes, percent true. Yes. All the time. There's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of impressive insiders out there. Oh, uh, you know, uh, it, it, isn't it awful to like, know it's wrong and you can't say, cause then you're burning someone too. And so you just have to sit there and be quiet sometimes. I mean, yeah. for you, it becomes personal too. Cause it's, it's stuff like that's impacting your, 
your opinion? Yeah, I just sit there and in Twitter sometimes I I normally don't respond to like ninety eight percent of Twitter, but if I was somehow in the middle of something and and in my own shortcomings got distracted because a stupid notification popped on my phone or something, and then I look at it and I'm like, oh, this is so dumb. I'm so mad at myself. I took myself away from what I was doing. I have to respond to this moron, which I've got to get away from. But um, yeah, no, I mean I, I'll tell you. Um, it is humbling when you when you have a better idea as to what's out there and, and what goes into this whole broader process. Uh, but on a positive, man, um, and again, I'm not just saying this for, for reasons. Um, dog, the kids on this team are incredible, man. Like when you get to interact with them, they're, they're really impressive kids and they're, they're good people. Uh, and, you know, that's does it apply for everybody no does it apply for everybody in the band or in a certain fraternity or whatever no that's not what i'm saying but like man these are these are impressive young men and I, i've really been blown away by the opportunity to get to know them um and you know their parents uh at a at a better level and it's uh it's a good group of guys who want to do uh the right thing and a lot of them are, are dads and are really impressive uh dads and you know obviously they're early in the process but I've been impressed by the the people and the the characters um, that are on this roster. Absolutely, dude. The the interviews, like the little windows, and I get to deal with a lot of these guys in the recruiting process, and that's helpful. But like these windows, where you get to see them do the interviews, step behind a podium, to be like 19 years old, and to step behind a podium with a bunch of cameras around you and handle yourself as well as so many of these guys do. Uh, I don't know if that's just an evolution of players being in front of cameras more now as as younger players but i don't or remember it being kids. that way i mean kid, oh, kids oh, growing kids up with and, cameras and tiktok and everything but yeah 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 we're could not, be, we're not I gonna do, i do turn think into Mike... jimbo the uh, couch psychologist here but yeah i mean it is a you're like a driving generation. down the you're driving down the road you're going through your neighborhood <laughs> jimbo loved himself at driving through his neighborhood and he didn't stop at a lot of stop signs it was it was weird i don't know why he's going 60 miles an hour about his neighborhood but that was a, a common one but Mike does recruit a certain type of guy. I feel like I've, I've seen that now and there's um, it's cool. It's refreshing. Yeah. To see. Mike uh, recruits a certain type of guy. And I've got to say, you know, would we have had success in this area? Yes, probably. Would we have had nearly the success that we've had without Mike Norvell and the culture that he's built? No, not at all. It's hand in glove, man. You know, you've got to have both. You can't just have marketing opportunities for kids and not have, uh, broader locker room buy-in, solid culture, everything else. Otherwise, the kids that you're getting are maybe kids that you don't want to get. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. if that's if that's it, is that really the kid you want to get? Um, so it it does go, um, you know, Mike is Mike is the best multiplier that we could ever ever ask for. And his his staff and his team uh, and the culture that he's built, uh, we're we're very very fortunate to to be able to be a reflection of. Uh, last question I had for you, Ingram, and I'll, and I'll let you run. It, it looks like you mentioned this earlier, NIL law, state of Florida. Uh, it, things are constantly changing, but it looks like it'll be going a, a pretty drastic change here coming up fairly soon. I believe all that's needed now is for the governor to to sign a piece of paper, and that'll allow institutions to be a little bit more involved in the process. Uh, I'm not sure how that end of, ends up impacting you guys, if it's uh, positive, if it's neutral. I, I guess what is your interpretation of – what is about to happen and, and how will that impact you guys both day to day and on a more macro level? Um, I don't think there'll be any kind of immediate impact. Uh, we'll have to see what it looks like from a broader perspective uh, to kind of get back to what I was just referencing. What I am uh, concerned with whatever else is that, and look, I'm no legal expert here. So I've asked my team uh, to confirm uh, what our initial thought of was of reviewing that is that it looks like you can enter into, you might be able to get kids to enter into NIL post-university. And that as a European soccer or as a soccer fan is very scary to me. There are stories of, uh, you know, 12 and 13 year old kids in Argentina and Brazil all the time partnering with somebody who all of a sudden has 30% of their earning rights moving forward or something like that. So uh, look, I'm not, I'm not positive of that, but that is, was just my quick takeaway from a first glance is that it looks like we might be opening up the NIL window broader, longer. And um, that just means that we got to have better representation for these kids. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, and I could be wrong about that. Look, I'm, I'm not a, like I said, uh, 
my dad's a lawyer, uh, which means I know nothing about the law. Uh, the, my biggest pet peeve are people that, you know, think that they've somehow picked up on their father's profession because of uh, osmosis or something like that. And, and I can assure you I have not. Um, but that would be my concern if what I read uh, is accurate. So we can put a pen in that and I'll send you a text in seven days or so if, I, if I'm reading what I think I am correctly. Uh, but that's that's my biggest takeaway from the law. I remember I'm let you go in the famous words of Paul Rudd. Hey, look at us. <laughs> Who thought we'd be here? <laughs> Not me. C- yeah. Congratulations on all the success and and how uh, how my how things have changed since the last time you were uh, on on the bench. So FSU fans, I know are appreciative of the work you've done. I know you said it doesn't feel like work, but you are putting in a lot of almost legitimately sleepless nights, like pretty close to it. And you're doing it because it's, it's something you love. So it, it's cool to see, like I said, it, I enjoy you as a person. I consider you a friend and it, it's always warming to see someone have dreams uh, come true. And, and that's what's happening. So congrats to you. And thank you for, uh, for all the hard work you're doing as an FSU fan. Yeah, no, no need to thank me at all. Uh, if you or <laughs> just, just <laughs> we'll, do my we'll, job, man. we'll be looking for the Brendan Sinone donation. I can assure you. So if you or anybody yeah. else out there, wants to get involved with us uh we'd love to have you uh be part of the team and we're really exceptionally excited as to what the future looks like 